Welcome to Talk Cosmos, the show where Sue Rose Minahan and her panel of guests bring you insightful conversations to awaken consciousness for soul growth. Come journey with us through astrology's energetic cycles and get ready to understand your path in the cosmic roots of the stars. Hello, I'm Sue Rose Minahan, host and founder of Top Cosmos. We're in our seventh season. And thank you. Thank you for joining us. We have our panel archetypal symbols. It's now the first week of the month, and we're celebrating the Aquarius archetype. We're still archetypally driven because there's so much to be known about that. And this is Aquarius. We're celebrating the Aquarius new moon that has another feature. It's a second new moon. Did I say full? Because I mean new. New moon after the solstice, the winter solstice. And it always initiates the lunar new moon, often called the Chinese new moon. But really, it's a lunar new moon. Next week, Jen Eng will talk further about that. Today, we're talking about the new moon and in many of its metaphysical features aligned with astrology. So birth prosperity for all of us, it's augmented with Pluto, it's augmented with the lunar new moon, it's augmented with Aquarius in this chart that we're going to discover more about. And thank you very much. We're now ready for our Bible symbols. Synthesizing the new moon consciousness through archetypal Sabian symbols, numerology, lunar mansions, tarot, and astrology, all together illuminating a new moon vision story, this is your archetypal symbols panel. I'm Sue Rose Minahan, collaborating with guests weekly since 2018. I'm an evolutionary astrologer, consultant, workshop facilitator, and lecture speaker. I'm a Dwarf Planet University graduate, charter member of Kepler Astrology Toastmaster Club. I have an AA degree and a fine arts music degree in jazz. I'm a certified color energy life coach, a writer, artist, musician, and ardent mythologist, a student of esoteric philosophies and life. I'm Elizabeth Liz Machette, a professional astrologer, intuitive, numerologist, and tarot reader. I am a certified sacred healing counselor, providing nurturing in-depth consultations for individuals and couples. I am an author, blogger, speaker, and international Reiki master and teacher. I create safe space in which to explore the deeper patterns of your life, to clarify your current circumstances and help you find your best path forward. And I'm Justin Crocodelzi, an archetypal Jyotish astrologer yoga and meditation teacher and author. I combine both Western ancient astrology and modern psychological astrology with Eastern Vedic astrology, and I specialize in predictive, electional, and karmic astrology for individuals and couples. I also do in-depth astrological research into arcane astrological concepts, focusing on the mystical, occult side of astrology. Eleanor Roosevelt once said, yesterday is history. Tomorrow is a mystery, and, and today, today is a, a gift. gift. And, and that's, that's why it's called the present. Aha, let's open it up. Hello, Justin. Hello, Liz. Hey, Real Sue. Pleasure. Yeah. Hi, Sue. It's great to be back. It is. We're on it. So let's open up those slides, shall we, Nate? Thank you. And I thank Liz and Justin for their contributions. It is teamwork and progressively learning further. They both have their websites, A Light Path for Elizabeth Liz, and for Justin, it's Justin Crockett Elsie, or just email him, justin.elsie at gmail. Okay. What are we about? We're about the new moon consciousness. We bring together all these metaphysical symbolic systems because we want to, as individuals, refocus and envision and align new intentions, because life is always evolving. It's always a new present. This is an ancient picture of Helios, the sun god. 
Any comments or shall I roll on? Keep okay. going. So what are we celebrating? Aquarius new moon. Aquarius is all over the place these days. Pluto just moved into it again. It's 20 years except for a couple of months, September, October, and a little bit into November. And it's also the lunar new moon, which is the wood dragon. Next week, please connect with Jen Ng from Toronto, who's going to elaborate with me as she has been on several different uh, formats. But this one will be a little different. They're all different. And we're going to probably focus on how is that relating with some of these big things happening in the year. So we'll see how it goes. But right now, we're just talking about what is a Aquarius new moon. It happens on February 9th and for parts of the world on the 10th. And if you're looking at GMT time, that's going to be in the evening at roughly 10.59. But to be exact, 10 p.m., 58 minutes and 50 seconds at 57. Thank you. That's a tongue twister. And it's 20 degrees Aquarius in 40 minutes. Any comments? I heard a gasp. It, no. It's also <laughs> called Chinese New Year. So we well, have another is, new year. <laughs> but, but Jen is very firm about the fact it's lunar, lunar, lunar. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm emphasizing. But you're absolutely right. Yes. If people want to Google it. And it is uh, vernacular and familiar. But that way it makes it everywhere, right? It's not just Chinese. It's Vietnam. It's Korean. It's all of it. So thank you, Liz. That's so true. It's a celebrated in many places around the world now. It's gotten to be much more popular than it was. So, Yes, yes, I know. I'm beginning to get, and I'm loving to learn out about, learn out about it, learn about it. Because this wood dragon is uh, powerful. You know, the animals, I, it's a growing, yes, it is important. So we're renewing our focus. Justin, do you want to start about the archetypal ideas of it, perhaps? Well, you know, the uh, new moon is all about new beginnings. So, I mean, that's that's really what we're looking at here. Oh, yes, yes. And I, I didn't mean to throw you a curve. It's community. It's friendship. You had brought up the fact that it's futuristic. I have it on my chart here. And it's like-minded groups. And really what you had brought up was group communications. I love that. Liz, do you want to add some of these factors? Yeah, that, that's what how it corresponds to the Aquarius new moon or makes it unique for this new moon, these keywords that you've been using. Um, I call it electric, um, it's lightning, it's computers, it's uh, technology information. I love it. Yeah, it is intuitive. That's such an important factor. And it is, it, 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 and it wants to elevate the conditions for the collective. There's another teamwork emphasis. And really the individual isn't diminished. It can get lost like always in the group, which is a factor because that's where the focus is. But is, is each of our individual leadership of prosperity and birth, rebirthing ourselves, that makes the whole so important? It's a, it's a new process. It's not a pyramid situation. It's really like a vortex of, of itself. And there's a shadow. We have to remember that too. There's always two sides of things to, to help us improve and to build the wholeness of it. And that is, it can be trauma, the shock and differences, the suddenness can be over uh, surprising and it puts us in shock. And there can be elitism. If we have like-minded groups, they can get narrower and narrower to be more particular, but having that heart centered with the polarity of Leo keeps that magmonious idea that, hey, we're in it together. Okay, so numerology. We add the new moon, which is 20 with zero to zero, and it equals, we're looking at both. Zero is the totality and two is self and other. Liz? Yeah, the zero is like everything and nothing. Um, anything's possible. Avoid. And two is about polarity, partnership, and balance. Justin? Yeah, I think uh, I think this is important to point out for people to really pay attention to the partnerships thing here. Because as we get into the astrology today, that's really what we're talking about here today is astrology, is that there's a yod with Juno. And, 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 and so there's a lot around this moon around relationships. 
and partnerships in the group. I like that. That is really tying it together because the nodes are right there. It's a whole nother year of who are we with the other and self. Thank you so much. Um, and then the major arcana tarot card is the um, star card, which corresponds to the sign of Aquarius. Um, intuition and stability, one foot in the water and one foot on the land in the rider weight deck. Um, you know, the same as Aquarius, freedom and hope, generous, um, new beginnings are possible. And um, the shadow could be denying unpleasant truths. Justin? No, not really to add to what you've already said. I really love this fact that a foot is in both spaces. Um, and there's many ways to look at water and land, but the very fact that we're integrating and acknowledging it has to do everything with Kabbalah, the tree of life, and and so many of the archetypes of mythology. But it's a beautiful arcana, and thank you for bringing that up. It's number 17 of a major, of the Trump major arcana. What am I trying to say? Minor arcana, Liz. And Justin. Well, we have um, the Five of Swords, the Six of Swords, and the Seven of Swords. And the Five of Swords is Venus in Aquarius, uh, Lord of Defeat, winning at all costs. The Six of Swords is Mercury in Aquarius, Lord of Earned Success, Rite of Passage. And the Seven of Swords is the Moon in Aquarius, Lord of Unstable Efforts, Acting Strategically. Justin, do you want to add to that? Yeah, and I would say, again, everything we're talking about here will lead to what we see with the archetypal symbols, the saving symbols, you know, that uh, there's, we talk about relationship here and 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 winning um, and success and effort. And these are some key words that we see later on here with the, with the chart. Yeah, and Venus is going to ingress into Aquarius and Mercury will also ingress into Aquarius um, this month if it hasn't already. So, yeah, yeah. I think and it's for, important. And, mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. And I was going to say for those who don't know that there is astrology associated with each tarot card, even the minor arcana or the pips, as they were called early on. And so it, I love how these themes actually kind of relate to as we get get into the astrology today. Very valuable and very illuminating and growth-oriented for all of us, including myself. And what I want to bring up is that swords can either be represented as thought, which in this case it is, or and sometimes fire. They, they switch with wands. But here, of course, Aquarius is a fixed air sign, and that's so valuable to realize. And it does take quite a bit of thought to comprehend how this might be introduced. Because if, if we have Venus that cares about how we are attracted to things, it, it is most interesting that this conflict in relationship might be looking at self versus looking at other, I would suppose. And with Mercury, it's all of a thought process of how to maybe strategize. So it'll be interesting to see if she's if he's with Palace or how that works. And yeah, it was, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Sorry. No, go ahead. No, no, I thought no. there was a pause. Go ahead. I'm ready. Yes, yes, you're right. You did. Go ahead. No, I was gonna say, you know, um to to Eliza's point there, and of course we know uh, traditionally swords are air, which is communications and thought. And 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 it and as we're going to see later on, there's a grand trine, Earth grand trine, with um, mm. uh, when you're talking about change there, with uh, the Venus, Juno, and Taurus is part of a, a part of a part of a grand trine that we're going to see here, and and there's so again Juno is in the mix with with how we're our desires and relationship, and we're going to see that when we get into the chart. Thank you, gorgeous. If you'd go on, Justin. Yeah. So, so one of the other things we look at, and and uh, are the uh, nishakras, and they're called lunar mansions. It's it's actually the constellations that the moon goes through, 
And on the next slide, the, the constellation that this moon will be in, in the sidereal world, is in Dynishta, um, which uh, is a star constellation that's, that's called the Star Symphony here. And this is where we start to see the, the, our, our, what we've been talking about so far and all these lights start to come together. And, and so as, as you've got there, a basis above is birth and below, you know, above and below is prosperity here. And this particular Luna Mansion key theme is about, uh, because it's in the Sidereals Capricorn. So it's really about pra being practical, but really putting forward that dynamic creative action towards something higher. And um, as we've already started to see with some of the uh, Lord of Lord of Defeat, you know, Lord of Success, which and what we were seeing in the Trump, uh, the Trumps and the the, the uh, Tarot, it kind of relates to this sort of um, um, how do you want to say dynamic, powerful energy. And, and of course, Mars is involved here because the ruling planet is Mars, and we're going to talk about Mars today because it's conjunct Venus in this in this uh, new moon. And the ruling deities for this are the Astavasus, which are the elemental gods. So really this, if you kind of want to summarize this as talking about attuning to the elements, earth, wind, fire, water, and creating something dynamic. Again, being successful. And as we're going to see later on in the, uh, the Sabian symbols, this, this kind of theme comes out here. I, I think it's beautiful how... Capricorn and the fact of practicality and with the higher spiritual goal really integrates Saturn as a traditional for both Capricorn and Aquarius. Of course, mm -hmm. modern day Uranus is, but this is very indicative. It's, yeah. It's, yeah, it unifies. And of course, doesn't Aquarius love that? It's like, yeah, we're not totally separate. We're individual, right. but we're together. Well, thank you. Liz, did you have a thought? No, go right on. Okay. Well, pulling this together just at this point, I felt strongly, let's bring a little mythology into this because, and to tie in, aren't these all coordinated? Before we get to the Sabians and before we go into further with the chart, which will be valuable. But in Western mythology, Zeus, who's also Jupiter, one's Greek, one's Roman as far as that heritage goes, but had chose Ganymede as his cupbearer. And of course, he was married to Hera, Juno, but he still had this love affair with Ganymede. And as Socrates asserts that, and for good reason, he loved Ganymede's psyche, the mind. And to, it means Ganu means taking pleasure and med means mind, like-minded. Isn't that Aquarian? In fact, Ganymede becomes the water bearer up in the constellations. And Jupiter, Zeus, the largest moon the astronomers have called Ganymede. And it's the only moon in the entire solar system that has electromagnetic waves. And as Liz was pointing out, it Aquarius, of course, is electric. I mean, Uranus is electric. And... In fact, everything has vibrations, but we see that with a thunderbolt. Zeus is a thunderbolt. So it, it really pulls together this whole idea of the Aquarian network of, of, you, of realizing that who's our like-minded and realizing we have like minds. The, ter the star brings this up, that it's matter and spirit. It's this unification of... of in, of that and and then the chakra too that the birth and the prosperity come from those two factors so i thought this really is and, and then i point out i like how the underlying play of this this mythological story is about a relationship <sighs> and so we're going to come back to you know relationships Goody. and yes. also in um the chakra and the tarot the star card it talks about the spiritual and the ascendant also talks about the spiritual too. Ah, <laughs> so there's a repeating pattern going on here in a couple of different ways. 
Oh, boy. Well, now time for Sabians, where you can both talk about Ascendant and, and, and MC as we go into the new moon. They were channeled in 1925 by the spiritualist medium Elsie Wheeler and the astrologer Mark Edmund Jones. Each one specifically talks about an astrological degree, and we use three. We have the past, present, and future. You can go to Dane Rujar's, his astrological mandala cycles of transformation. You can Google that. And also his audio libraries at the Astrology University. Here is our chart. It is February 9th. We're doing Washington, D.C. And it's 5.58 minutes and 57 seconds p.m. We have an ascendant that is 25 degrees Leo, an MC that's 19 degrees Taurus. I'm not doing the minutes. And a new moon, of course, at 20 degrees Aquarius. I think you were going to begin with just a synopsis of the ascendant before we go on. Yeah, I, so, so when we want to look at a chart to give it context, uh, you know, if you're doing a reading, you're going to want to know what what is what is what is the beginning of the chart, the ascendant, what's the ruler of it, and then of course what the midheaven, what we're trying to uh, ultimately uh, to look at. So that's why we look at the ascendant, the midheaven here, because it gives context to the overall chart. And it's interesting when we look at the Sabian symbols um, for the ascendant, it does talk about being total committed, uh, self reliant and and attuning to above and below and and being independent self-reliant and committed and so that's kind of how we're moving into this new moon uh with that and then if we move to the mid heaven it speaks to uh purification and cleansing and so it kind of gives us an idea of what we're trying mm -hmm. to do is as liz pointed out the spiritual earlier of moving towards something spiritual mm -hmm. trying to put forward that effort mars is very prominent in the chart and attuning and using this elemental energy to to uh, make things better, basically. I love that right off the bat, if I may, before Liz comment, because opening space, this is another dimension of that so that we can receive and it, it, to incorporate that co-partnership of our natural spirit. Liz, if that makes yes. sense. Yes, it, it's like the... The tarot card, the nashatra, and the ascendant, they're like have all this in correspondence with each other. So it's like, okay, spiritual spirituality, but also being in the world we're in, but yet attaining some spirituality or growing in spirituality. I love that. And then the midheaven, um, you know, I agree with what um, Justin said, and it also has new potential and... Um, be the observer. Yeah, and, and, and I might say, I love, uh, thank you for mentioning the new potential. I forgot about that. Usually I'm seeing it on the screen, so I, I, I forgot about that. But that Uranus on the midheaven kind of, I think, speaks to that new potential, right? Mm, yes. Boy, let's, goody. Yeah. Well, okay, yeah, yeah. I was and the ascendant is ruled by the sun, and we're in a new moon. So the sun and the moon are conjunct. So, um that to me even makes the new moon, you know, kind of gives a, a little bit more power behind it right there. And that ties it all into the aspects, which we will follow after this, probably in the next half hour too, because those two factors, the rawness at the MC, that is ruling, co-ruling modern times, that sun moon is in a square, meaning it wants some action. It wants to figure it out and it's going to be sudden. So this potentiality of clearing, recommitting. Oh, goody. Well, let's talk about the sun and moon, shall we? We have past, present, future. Past was 19 degrees. It's a forest fire subdued by the use of water, chemicals, and sheer muscular energy force because the skill and courage necessary or to bring control to destructive potential if careless about karmic visitations. And so the key word is there's a need for mobilizing energy and a deep sense of indomilit. I knew I shouldn't say this word. Liz, what's the word? Indomitability. I guess. Indomitability. Indomitability. Oh, good. That took teamwork. All right, Liz, go with the second. Yeah. Okay, the present Aquarius 20, a large dove bearing messages. 
the fulfillment of individual's creative function, certification of an individual's worth and victory. Aha. Uh -huh. Justin. And the, can we go back to the prior one? Oh, was, yes, indeed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. You got it. Uh, yeah, I was, I was, uh, the, yeah, the fulfillment of creative function. Okay, yeah. Certification of worth and victory. So if we go to the next one, uh, which is what we're moving towards, is a disappointed and disillusioned woman courageously faces a seemingly empty life. So this is that archetypal image. The key note is the capacity to meet emotionally upsetting experiences in our human relationships. Again, we're talking about relationships with strength and character. And so it urges us to develop resilience, which, by the way, was one of the key key themes that we've already looked at today with the ascendant and some other things. And so keywords for these three are indomitability, certification, and resilience. Again, kind of spoke to the nishatra, uh, that and and about attuning to that those those earth elements and what we were talking about, the Lord of defeat and Lord of success. It really attuning into uh, the element of earth and air to to accomplish what we want in this this um, with those two grand trines and accomplishing what we want to accomplish. Oh, well, and I, I would sum it up as uh, through hard work and strength, we achieve and grow. Yeah. Yeah, but it is, and I like that, except that just to add this idea of this intuitive, the spirit, the, the connection, it's just the outer planets, Uranus and Neptune and Pi and and Sat and Saturn now are all driving it home. Actually, the only one that isn't is Uranus. It's in Earth, but it is. They're all three driving home this whole idea that wake up. It's not just a table. It's the thought of the table that that manifests us out of the 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 big unknown. At any rate, but and yeah, do we have? This idea of where we're at, I know you stopped here, Justin, and I'm glad you did, because the white dove, this is what's happening now. You know, we are in this maybe fulfillment where we were watching out for what could have happened if we were not careful of her karma. And so now it's about peace. And... So it is, yeah, resilience under adverse adversity, because how do we maintain that, I guess, if things don't go the way we want, right? Is that how you'd say it? Yeah, I see you shaking your head. Yep, that, that sounds good. Yeah, I put resilience earlier on my wall. I thought, yeah, it's in the right department. Well, let's see, what time do we have? Ah, it is break time. Thank you, Mr. Justin Elsie and Elizabeth Muschette. This is time to take a little break away and we'll be back about the astrology for this illustrious Aquarian new moon, signifying a new year, a new start. Thank you. we take a break from this week's edition of Talk Cosmos, let's take a look at this cycle's archetype. We are currently in the Yang period of Aquarius, ruled modernly by Uranus and Saturn in traditional astrology by the ancients. By leaving a cycle based on governing structures through both man-made and universal laws, Aquarius breaks established patterns, permitting the energy of freedom. Just as its ruling planet Uranus spins on its side and orbits backwards, as a fixed air sign represented by the water bearer pouring the spirit of cosmic energy, Aquarius seeks to find like-minded, intuitively aligned souls to connect in social groups for the elevation and improvement of all. This is Martha Norwalk. Every Sunday morning, beginning at 9 a.m., thanks in part to the Ananda Institute of Living Yoga, we cover the world of animals. This week, it's best neuroenergetic balancing Rasmussen Reset and Energy Code Sunday. Dr. Nels Rasmussen and Sister Linda Rasmussen join us to take your phone calls, and together they can help you or your animal friends with behavioral, emotional, or physical issues. Hope you can join us for your free remote treatment. Martha Norwalk's Animal World, Sunday morning, 9 a.m. to noon, right here on Alternative Talk, a.m. 1150. 
Talk Cosmos brings insightful conversations to awaken consciousness for the soul growth with hour-long programs every Sunday at 1 p.m. Pacific on KKNW. Talk Cosmos weekly programs are also available to watch live on the Talk Cosmos YouTube channel and Facebook page. While you're there, make sure you click the like and subscribe buttons so you get the full Talk Cosmos experience. Or if you'd rather listen to the show archives with audio only, the entire podcast collection since 2018 is available on most podcast carriers. And to find out about upcoming programs, sign up for the newsletter at TalkCosmos.com. So grab your coffee, tea, or kombucha and enjoy the show. Alternative Talk 1150. It's good for what ails you. This statement has not been evaluated by the FDA. Well, there you go. We're not evaluating anything, but we are assessing. (laughs) So at this moment, we want to bring attention to what's going on. And I want to start off this time with saying... Kaleidoscope Visions, every month at the panel on the fourth week, has a focus of a transit, and we do a reading, a transit reading for someone that volunteers to be a participant. And last year concluded, and we have a little break usually, and we've reopened those applications. So go to Talk Cosmos and fill that out. We've had people from England, you know, you don't have to be right here in the Northwest or over even on the... You mean the East Coast, where we've had people from all over the United States. And of course, Australia is open too. So we're looking forward to having a, a full calendar. And I just wanted to bring that to our attention. Besides the fact that next week, Jen Ng will be talking about the Wood Dragon. And that'll be exciting. Justin and Liz, I know you started a new podcast, but I'll listen. Uh, Liz, why don't you start off? Tell us about that. Yes, I got my YouTube channel going and I have have two episodes and Justin's been on those with me. And then I have another one coming up that you're going to be on with me, Sue. Um, I'm going to try and have a podcast every week. So you can find me at YouTube, um, Elizabeth Liz Machette. Boy, that would, it's exciting. I, I loved it. It was about the full moon. And I learned quite a bit. So I definitely applaud that. And Justin, of course, you're on that, but what... You might have other Yeah, things. I'm just really, this is the beginning of the year, so I'm focusing mainly on individual readings for clients that are looking towards the new year. So that's my main focus right now. Okay. Well, this is good. I We learned so much through clients. This new moon is 20 degrees and 44 minutes in Aquarius. And this is just a chart if you want the UTGMT, it's as I had said, it's in the evening on the 9th, 10 in the evening, 58 minutes and 57 seconds. And on the East Coast, it's going to be five hours earlier at 5 o'clock, 58, 57. And in Seattle at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And here a little afternoon in Hawaii. Or, and if you're in Australia, it's going to be on the 10th in the morning. So check out this slide. The observations and highlights, just generally speaking, it's a very tight bundle shape. Mark Edmund Jones gave that patterns. There's seven of them. And it means extreme focus because they're tight. They're about 120 degrees. That's like a trine from beginning to end. Venus starts it. And it trails at the end with Uranus. So it's our values and how they're getting shook. So there you go. (laughs) And everything's straight ahead. Nothing is an apparent retrograde as far as all the planets are concerned until the 1st of April. Mercury does its once of every three times a year apparent retrograde cycle. It's so close to the sun. And the other factor is that we find is that the two nodal rulers, Venus and Mars, Libra, or the south node with Venus and Aries with Mars as the north node, are conjunct. So that's a bit of unity, it seems, to help us out, hands-on experience. Do you have comments or should we roll on? 
No, I was going to make a comment. I, I love how you brought out the Venus and Mars as being rulers, but to, for the audience, this is not the only conjunction in the chart uh, that that, no. that Mercury's conjunct Pluto and Mars is conjunct Pluto. So, yeah, but that's a really great, important, you know, Venus conjunct Mars is definitely a, high, a very high, probably, probably yeah. the most important conjunction. Definitely. Good. Liz, or shall we move? Go to the next chart. Okay. So here we are, soft aspects and hard aspects that means easy and flowing versus a little action and some effort just for the sun and the moon we have these other conjunctions that each of these are making but this is just a focus just like we did with the sabians like what is this new moon in itself operating through and for soft aspects it's a flow it is the sun and moon which working right at the same degree are in a flow with the south node of Libra. And it's that's a trine, 120 degrees. And it's also in a trine with Vesta of our hearth. And it's in a connective one with the north node of Chiron, the healer. To me, this all says, hey, we're working on opening up our relationships on the hearth with healing. Liz? Yeah, the sun and moon are sextile to the Chiron North Node. For those that miss that in Aries, the Chiron and the North Node, and they're getting closer and closer. They're going to be exact here pretty soon. So that's a, a, a good aspect that's happening in the chart. Go ahead. No, I, I agree with both of what both of you said and, and how, how, uh, so you brought home the okay. point that it's about healing relationships because as we you know as we look at vesta and gemini vesta is that the hearth and in gemini it's about communications and it's it's you know trining that that uh, sun and moon which are in aquarius about communications in the collective but then we get juno that comes in and says nope don't forget about me i'm about improving relationships and something i've noticed and people's charts where Juno's currently in Virgo, uh, it seems a place where people are trying to improve their relationship with whatever Juno is is hitting, whatever house it's in. So I, I definitely, you know, to both of what you've said about relationships and improvement here. And this kind of gets to that, that mid heaven where we're talking about purification and new potential. Good point, because that automatically brings us into the hard aspect. So things are flowing along how we want to do things and how we're able to, but what's the kind of the oil, I mean, the nitty gritty part that, that grinds it. And that quincunx, 150 degrees, is often referred to as an adjustment. So all of those desires of improving and healing our relationships are, like you said, pointing out, really working at how are we perfecting and how can we refine or what it shifts i know i it's it's really deep along with it be, because there's always this introspection and with and, and it, this returns to the fact that the sun and moon is squaring its ruler which is Uranus. so yeah i was going i was going to just make a point about go that ahead. as yeah. uh, the noted astrologer uh, francis accountron talks about that sun squaring Uranus that can bring erratic behavior. Um, and it's it's something to, it's a caution in the chart here as we're dealing with these relationships because Uranus on that mid heaven and squaring the sun, there's definitely how you're improving this relationship. It needs to be also looked at as well, that it's not, you know, that there's some commitment there and, and not erratically dealing with things. But, you know, I love the fact that then again, it opens up like from the Ascendant and the MC, at least for this time zone of this nation here in the USA, with East Coast representing all of us, is that by clearing, by recommitting, by realigning with that spirit, which Aquarius and Uranus are so intuitive, it, it helps uh, clear or clean or what you were saying about perfecting and healing and, you know, it all works together and of well, course go ahead <laughs> well with the new moon i just want to remind people it's time to you know make your wishes and desires known and the chart is 
asking with the trine to Uran or the South Node to, you know, maybe reflect on the past. And um, the Chiron is conjunct the North Node of how, where, how you want to move forward. And also um, the Quincunx to Juno, like relationships. And then the square to Uranus can really say, okay, what needs to change? What do I want to change? And those are the values. Thank you. That is like, I was going to add the it's connecting to Venus, which represents what we're attracted to for makes beauty, harm, harmony in the world, but our values. So all together, it's like, what do we value? What is true to our value? That goes along with the whole Virgo introspection. And I might so, say, mm -hmm. and I might say one other thing about value, and we haven't really said too much about Chiron. But that's as we're evaluating those relationships or trying to prove them, we could have issues that come up where we're not valued uh, because mm -hmm. Chiron in Aries is not being valued. And that, because that's sort of an or, overarching theme throughout the year. I'm seeing that with a lot of clients with where Chiron is at. It's, it's about them being valued in the relationship. Identity. Yes. In fact, in Liz's podcast where she and I are speaking about Pluto and Venus conjunct Pluto. And that exact day, Chiron is conjunct the North Node at 16 degrees. And that'll be on the 17th of February. There's just like this domino of Pluto. They're all going into Aquarius. And so we're experiencing these deep transformations of our mind with Mercury then our action with Mars and then our values with Venus. So it's just, we're trying to let, yes, the spotlight's on, but viscerally, uh, not just intuitively, but instinctively, it, it's a path of, I'm not going to say a roller coaster, but. <laughs> well, and there's a lot going on with the aspects to the sun and moon. So to me, that just, in, uh, enforces it. it's a very powerful new moon so you know be sure and do your ritual or your ceremony or ask do your affirmations or ask for your desires mm. for time and, go ahead go ahead and if i may say back to the new moon sabian symbols to where where it's talking about indomitability um resilience and certification certification of worth there that we're going if if you know venus is is also desires and and being conjunct mars it gives it an indomitability uh of of accomplishing our desires of what venus desires and so i think mm -hmm. uh, this is a positive thing this is really a, a really mm -hmm. if you really want to accomplish something right now wherever this shows up in your chart you, you can do that it's a matter of priorities, yes. <laughs> well, and Venus and Mars are moving closer to an exact conjunction on the 21st at eight degrees. So That's of Aquarius. So it's like, you know, very powerful to set a new to your um, new cycle. And Jupiter is conjuncting a uh, 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 connect sextile in a con which is 60 uh, 60 degrees with Saturn, and of course that's expansion and contraction, but it's grounding that growth development. So that's helping us too. So, Yeah, I would, I, you know, I always tell people Saturn and Pisces is like a dose of reality to the Piscean archetype. So it's, it's where we become a little bit more serious and how, because Saturn and Pisces is about, okay, I have these dr Piscean dreams and goals, but now it's about putting the, our money where our money mouth is or taking the action and being disciplined with it, bringing a dose of reality to it. And we come by it honestly, because Mars is also in a sextile to Neptune. So of course that's getting our dreams going. Well, we have these two trines that Liz, I think you made mention to one's in air, one's of earth. So one is communicating, connecting, and the others of grounding. And of course, this is also like the star of David, or it's the star of, it's powerful well, and, and it ahead. kind of reaffirms the uh what we've been talking about one foot in the mundane or in the earth and one in the spiritual so it's, there's another indicator of that yeah. too so these patterns are repeating pretty a lot in this chart so and the sun moon is part of that earth or air rather 
I, I may say that. though there, that this earth one may not be as grounding as it normally is here because we have mm. uranus in it so there mm. is a change in how we're trying to improve because that midheaven where uranus was was talking about purification and then we got it tr you know trining juno our relationships in virgo which is trying to improve our relationships so there's there's going to be some upheaval here of of what our and venus being that third one you know we 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 definitely, this is about moving some earth now. We may have been grounded a little bit, but it is going to be moving some earth here with Uranus. Um, and, and of course, communication is a big part of that, as you mentioned, Sue, you know, with, uh, with the, the, yeah. uh, the, uh, the air trine. Kilauea here on the big island is like hundreds of earthquakes a minute, or not a minute, an hour. It's like it's all over the news. They don't yet, they know that it will be erupting. So there you go. It's going to be as sudden, but it makes new earth, right? It is it, it like in manifestation, one form of. Better you than me. I can give all those earthquakes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't feel them. They're over here. They're very subtle, but it is this total interaction. And it really, I suppose the fact that we're maybe has such a big base, but we're the tallest of Anywhere, it's 33,000 feet from the base up to the top of the peak of, I, I think, uh, Mauna Kea. Well, this, one of them. Anyway, go ahead. Yeah. I this earth trying, you know, reminds me of in Europe, a lot of the farmers are on strike. And so how we take care of earth, you know, it's like it, something <gasps> needs to change of how we treat the earth and all that. Centaurus, so. Thank mm -hmm. you. So we have activating driven energies, our squares, our oppositions. And here the sun and moon again is square, it's ruler as we had brought up, but also Venus, which rules we could say in succession to that Uranus because it's in Taurus, is squaring. That means it's right at the bendings as one way of putting it, but between them, right? It's smack dab and so we're juggling. Is it our, our team, is it our relationships or is it me and how to, work at it but meanwhile the the Aries north node is with Chiron so it's a, a healing factor altogether with our values how we're trying to figure this out and make changes yeah I thought maybe one of you would go on we have Mercury that's square Jupiter so it's a lot of thinking and repositioning our belief factors, you know, our belief systems. It's a real growth process. It's a really transformative process. And that goes back to Jupiter, not Jupiter, but Pluto, thank you, being in Aquarius. In the um, caution with the Mercury square Jupiter, it's like, um, you know, be careful what you say, because you can't take it back. Um, and so it's like breathe or count to three, maybe before you open your mouth or take a quick walk or something. <laughs> but there's probably some things that need to be said that need to be said. But if you can do it in not a heated temper, that would be so much more beneficial. Excellent. And, and you know, putting this in the real world here, besides our individual lives, you know, Aquarius rules social media. And, and so mm -hmm. this is kind of pay attention to what's going on with social media because uh, Aquarius rules that. And with Mercury there and Mars and Venus, we could see new, new social media apps come out right about right now. And AI is coming out right now, which is also mm. Aquarian. But then if we look at astrology, there's this whole discussion going on in the, the astrology community right now, because Aquarius rules astrology about, about the mountain astrologer and, and about how it's changed to the, to the new perspective. And so this is part of that Aquarian, um, you know, communications in a group. Because uh, it rules the eleventh house, and 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 how we're going to see some changes with communications and and how we think and and in the collective. Good, uh, thank you. These yods that were brought up, a yod is where there's one planet or a point, and it is at 150 degrees, which in astrology is doesn't have any commonality. Essentially, that's the idea, and it's connected to two like a tripod, two planets that do have a lot of connections. They're like 60 degrees. They're in cahoots with each other. But both of them are trying to get this. And there's a whole reason why. We don't have a lot of time to go into it. But the fact is 
is that they are part of this whole process of our adjustments and the sun moon is part of it. And it's to that Juno that you bring up, Justin, that's so valuable. And it is in that healing process with the North Node and and Chiron. So that's point in case. Yeah. Okay, then I'll go on. The other one is with the Mars and Neptune of the dream, dream, dream of action with our visions and dreams and working how in this, uh, uh, in Eastern time for the nation, how are we enacting that through ourself, our ascendant and our part of fortune, which with the new moon is always on the ascendant. So it's like the two of them are big focuses and big drives, but yet it's a work in progress. Yes? Yeah. Okay. Here, Liz, you brought this up, and I'm so glad because transiting Mars in this chart is conjunct our natal Pluto at 27 degrees Capricorn, which of course the last couple of years was five times being, we just finished that earlier of being exactly aspected as far as our revolution July 4th chart goes because a country has many charts, but that's the one that we celebrate as a nation. And along with it is Vesta that seems to have a dual signature here because both the transiting chart and the natal chart have Vesta very strongly uh, aspected. The transiting is aspecting at 21 degrees Gemini of communication with our natal Mars. And so Mars is being also activated in both of these charts that way, natal and transiting. But the, the natal Vesta of our hearth in 19 degrees uh, Taurus, which is a most stable Earth sign there is, is conjunct Uranus, the unstable factor in Taurus. Yeah, I, you know, I th we brought this up on another talk, Liz and I did. I think I forget what I was saying mm -hmm. about the full moon. That on the full moon coming up, that there's going to be some conjunction there with the the uh, the USA's chart on the moon. And um, and so that part of that chart there where we see the the south node of the United States and the moon of the United States, something really to watch is the United States moon coming up here because it, it gets uh, triggered with these transits through this um, uh, through through this this whole transit here. It, that rings bells because I love the USA chart. I love looking at it as a grand scale and yeah, know, noticing, do, you know, yeah. and noticing that the transiting node in Libra is applying to a conjunction with natal because it goes in reverse. To remind people, it starts at twenty nine and it goes it goes in the uh, primary motion, which is as the sun, Earth spins rather than orbiting around the earth and I mean it's clockwise but it's going to go to four it's at 17 degrees libra as of this new moon goes to 14 degrees in in the next well actually it takes a couple of months i checked that out because of the fact that we have the eclipses happening because eclipses always happen when the new moon or full moon are next to the nodes. And so then it hangs out for a long time. So it's gonna hang out, I think, at 15 degrees Libra for like two months, just like it did on well, my nodes. But here's here's the thing is that mm -hmm. Mars, Venus, Mercury, and the sun are all gonna go over the natal, the United States chart, natal uh, moon, Aquarian moon at 27 degrees coming up here. So you well, really, that's true. That's, yes. that's what I'm saying. Really look at this full moon coming up. There's a lot happening there because a lot's going to yeah. hit the United States uh, Aquarian moon at 27 degrees. And we're getting it from both ends. We're getting it from our, when we, and, and with Aquarius, we as individuals make up the whole, the network. So it's beautiful. This is a recap. There's a lot here. 
you can look at this yourself, but there's these major factors have dual uh, things that they're working on not to go over it. So thank you very much. This is Top Cosmos. Thank you for signing up for the newsletter. And you can always go to the YouTube and, and like it. And we have many, many playlists. And this is a caption of all that. Thank you, Liz and Justin. If we, we have a moment, we can chat through the music. If you have a... Go ahead, Liz. <laughs> it was great to be here. And I look forward to coming back next month. Oh, yeah, indeed. Well, folks, keep your ideals going. Know that we're forging ahead. Our individuality matters. And working in teams is a real growth process. So blessings to you all. And I thank this panel. It's a team. Okay. See ya. Thank you for joining an insightful conversation on Talk Cosmos, the show where Sue Rose Minahan and her panel of guests awaken consciousness by connecting soul growth patterns with astrology's energetic cycles. Be sure to tune in next Sunday, 1 p.m. Pacific time, to continue your journey through the roots of the cosmic pathway.